understood when Irina said, which chair should I sit in? And then I understood when you said it. But when they were in these two chairs, why were you asking me? Humility. <laughs> Humility. Yes, or if you should stand. Yeah. Or uh, women are more proactive. Are these chairs. <laughs> women are more, are more proactive. Yeah, women are more proactive. There's your first takeaway. <laughs> There's your first takeaway from this event. Um, so what are you going to see from this? One of the things you're going to see is that we're having roundtable conversations. If somebody's got their back to you, it's not intended to be rude because you'll be able to see them up on the screen, but it keeps it intimate. Uh, and of course, you can turn around if, if you want to. The, the, the focus of this panel is the focus of my remarks last night, which is connectedness, case studies and connectedness. How is the newly rewired world changing the world of culture? And Irina, you, from the unique perspective provided by um, uh, your position at, at, at UNESCO, have seen the world of culture change over the course of the past couple of years. And so if, and again, our conversations, conversational brief exchanges, if in your opening remarks, you, you could just sort of give us a sense of how, how that change, how that connectedness is affecting culture as you see it. Well, first and foremost, of course, my congratulations. Uh, as you can imagine, I'm overwhelmed by the fact that uh, a foreign policy uh, group uh, which is uh, focused on foreign policy, on security issues, on the, uh, globalization, but from a different point of view, from a more political point of view, is also having this wonderful uh, meeting uh, with so many artists uh, and experts in this area. I think this is uh, exactly what is needed nowadays in the world. I think this is um, a conversation that is overdue because uh, culture, um, as you said yesterday in your opening remarks and uh, also, Your Excellency, you did mention that. Culture, I would add arts and I would add heritage because of what is happening nowadays in the world, uh, is coming to the forefront of so many of the challenges that we have nowadays. Uh, mentioning heritage and, and foreign policy and security issues, uh, of course, I first and foremost would like to say that uh, uh, the destruction of heritage, the destruction of cultural diversity, what we see uh, uh, in Iraq, in Syria, in some other parts of the world, uh, probably has provoked us to think and encouraged us to think more about why this matters for us as human beings, as humanity. Uh, because culture does uh, create uh, empathy, a culture is that opens minds, a culture is what uh, connects us uh, also as human beings. Uh, we share our stories, we share our identities, uh, because culture also is about identities. Uh, culture heals. Uh, culture reconciles, uh, culture brings peace, uh, uh, culture creates jobs even, culture is development, uh, social cohesion, social inclusion. All this is about culture uh, and, and creativity and arts nowadays. So that is why I think culture is on the, cross, uh, uh, on the crossroad of so many of the challenges that we have uh, today. Uh, and it is in my firm belief that only through culture we can find the right answers to some of these challenges. Thank you, and I think that's a great way to frame the discussion. I would explain that FP Group was involved in this uh, one of two ways. One is that I started out as a theater director um, and, spent, and TV producer, and so I spent the first 10 years of my life in that world. Um, but that's actually kind of a glib answer. The real answer is, as I said last night, culture is probably the most powerful force in the world, the greatest change agent that exists in the world, and that we don't see art as a luxury, we see it as a necessity. We see it as the driver of systems of beliefs, and, also, and that's why groups like the Taliban and Daesh, when they come into a place, tear down culture, because they see it weakening societies. And yet, what we've seen here is something different. We've seen something grow up, and Nora, not just in your capacity as a minister, but prior to that, uh, and in your work at 2454, you've seen an engine of cultural growth happen here in the UAE uh, in the midst of this region where people are tearing culture down. And I'm wondering if, 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 you, if you see this as a winning battle and if you can speak to some specific examples of how you think it's making a difference. Thank you, David. Well, I'm honored to be here today and to speak about maybe let's look at um, what destructs our morals. Uh, I feel that the people who are destructing uh, heritage or art or, or whatever medium that expresses um, unity uh, are people who are destructive in a different way or in a matter. 
Um, and we th if we think of what uh, brings us in common is art, culture, media, music, um, and yeah, we can, we can list our differences. Uh, we're living in a, in a region that is boiling currently. Unfortunately, we've been receiving news uh, every, every day or, or, or by an hour, an hour of, of, uh, of, of destruction or death. Um, and for us, how can we preserve that? And with my work in the media side um, and looking at what are we missing here? This is always the question. What we've been missing? Um, why is all our kids are, are watching content that is not made by us, uh, that doesn't speak our language, or is not relevant to us? Mm -hmm. These are all questions we started to ask ourselves in the early 2000, uh, two, uh, 2007. Uh, and therefore, we looked into how to create this ecosystem. Um, it won't solve the problems, but at least it will be a start. A start, number one, to help create the content and bring back content that halted because of war. Um, and my example is Sesame Street, is Iftahia Simpson. It halted for 25 years. I grew up watching Iftahia Simpson. I grew up watching our version of Big Bird. And by the way, it's a camel. So we didn't know it's a camel till we started working in the new version of a puppet. We thought it's just a big creature. Um, Where are Sesame Street people? There, yeah. are, you, are you guys out here someplace? Oh yeah, good. It's very good to see. And oh yeah, well, good so, because look what could happen. Exactly. You can you create Nora Al Kabi. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just know because it's so. So for us, getting back a content that halted and resonated with us as kids is important. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to watch uh, the Americans at the end of the day, or going to watch I don't know uh, uh, Grey's Anatomy or Downton Abbey. I'm going to watch great content. The question is, we know about all of your presidents more than you do. We know about your history. We know about your food. We know about many things that defines your culture. But what do you know about us? What you know about us currently, it's what's surfacing in news. And we don't blame you. We should blame ourselves. Where are we from creating our own stories, content, animation, games, or being part of it? Even, I'm, even if I'm doing a coffee for the director of Star Wars, it's fine. I'm part of creating a content. If Abu Dhabi is a backlot of Star Wars, Fast and Furious, the most aggressive Bollywood movies, and again, great Arabic content for our kids, how can we get that to unite us and get the story out there? Well, and I think that's a really important point in the context of this connected world. Here is Abu Dhabi, which is seven hours flight from two-thirds of the population of the world. It has to become a hub um, in order for the world, this connected world, to develop the content that the people within that seven hours flight demand. It can't all come from one place. Um, and, you know, I was in China last week, and we saw the same thing there. Major new hubs of culture that are fueling and driving new content into this world and are going to change the paradigm. For a long time, the paradigm of culture in the world has been Hollywood and things that have been produced in very few places. And now I think we're going to move to a world in which there's coming from more places. This can raise understanding. It can produce backlash. Now, having said that, Bob, you're in the place where there has been a lot of leadership in the past on this, and it looks like culture is on the chopping block. Um, and, you know, if Bob looks a little glum, uh, it's because he has a cold. Um, but it's also because he's living in a country where the, the few dollars that exist for culture look like they're going to go away. And so why do you have in one part of the world, or how do you feel about having in one part of the world, this kind of flowering, and in other parts where have led, which have led, like the U.S., we see something else. What's, the, wh 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 what's your perspective on that tension? Well, actually, uh, often what you see is not actually the reality that's there. That's what you were pointing out as well. But in, in the United States today, you have actually an explosion of art activity, just not necessarily government-sponsored arts activity. Um, in fact, the bad part about that is it's moving too far toward, in the nonprofit world, commercial response, commercial earned income as a basis. Uh, but we still have a very robust private sector uh, and, and public sector at the local level and at the state level support mechanism. Two local arts agencies from America are here, from San Francisco and uh, Los Angeles County. Um, what we see is, however, uh, 
hundreds of years of a struggle in America between people who um, believe that the arts are important and people who do not. If you recall in our American history, uh, when the Puritans arrived, they outlawed the arts. They outlawed theater, they outlawed dance, they outlawed music, they outlawed certain colors. We've been struggling from that Puritan problem ever since. But I, I see today um, in the connectivity part of what we're talking about, Worldwide, but in the United States as well, there, there are artists, and that's one kind of new connectivity in problem solving. There are arts institutions and arts organizations, and uh, in the United States, we are connecting more worldwide with the existing institutions, like the International Federation of Arts Councils. And then there's the public itself. And the big evolution I see is the interest in the public uh, in, in our country and worldwide in making art more a personal part of their lives. Half of the American public, according to surveys, are interested in making things themselves, whether it's poetry or their own dance or their, 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 their own um, theater or, or, or craft and folk art. And that is an explosion that's happening on that front, also worldwide connectivity. So finding ways to bring all of these threads together, I think, is the real challenge of what I'm hoping to learn more about here for uh, that global connectivity institutionally, um, in the public itself, and among artists. Well, it sounds to me like the, the cultural landscape is changing, um, and, and that what you have is a flourishing, but it's, it's different from what we've seen in the past. You have new capitals of cultural creativity. You have new approaches to cultural creativity that empower the individual via the internet, via other kinds of tools that are available. And so it's not like culture is gonna go away. It's also not gonna stay the same. What do you see as the main forces that are driving change? Where is it gonna take us? Whether it's from these things or of technological developments or others? I think here there are two, probably two levels. Uh, on one level, uh, we have, of course, the technology and uh, the digital technology which brings uh, more opportunities uh, for uh, uh, spreading culture, for creativity. Uh, so it, it, it goes uh, both ways. It uh, kind of uh, democratizes culture. It gives a better access. But on the other side, uh, the other challenge is how to bring the global, this global connectedness, uh, uh, our understanding about uh, uh, culture, history, uh, uh, empathy also to the local. And I think here uh, there are uh, different uh, trends, uh, different developments. On, un on one side, as I mentioned, because of the uh, destruction of heritage, the extremist activities that are happening in the region, uh, I'm talking, of course, about uh, the Middle East, I'm talking about uh, Syria, Iraq mainly, uh, there is a lot more understanding of why it matters. I'm coming of a long series of uh, important, I would say, historic even events. It started here in Abu Dhabi with the Conference on uh, Culture Protecting Heritage in Conflict, uh, uh, initiative of France in Abu Dhabi, very important initiative. Then we moved to the Security Council resolution just two weeks ago uh, for the first time, it's historic resolution on the protection of culture, heritage, diversity in the Middle East. Then the G7 uh, ministers of culture for the first time met in Florence and adopted another major resolution. But how we trigger this down to the local community and how we create this local content. I would say here that uh, initiatives uh, linked to the both intangible cultural heritage, uh, another a little bit unknown area uh, in, the, in the global context, uh, contest is so important. Uh, it's on one side to step on the tradition on the cultural heritage uh, which is bred by the local people and I will give you an example with uh, uh, a quite an impoverished conflict country. I'm talking about the Central African Republic and another one in South Sudan. When I went there uh, three, four years ago, and one of the, our first projects was young people to go to the different villages and families and to try to identify their intangible heritage, their old traditions, uh, their stories. And they were telling me that uh, elderly people were crying because they said we never thought that somebody will be interested in our culture. And I think it was so wonderful because this was the way also to heal them, to bring them back, to respect them, and to involve them in our global quest for reconciliation, for peace, for culture. I think it was wonderful. So, so again, there's, this is kind of a hopeful message. There are things happening. The, this session, the first day, 
here is called, you know, we're looking at the state of the arts, right? This is, this is where we're going. And we're going to look later, tomorrow, at, at how you can use culture to produce social change, and on Wednesday, at technological factors that are driving this forward. But let's focus on this flourishing. And I think, you know, many, most of the people actually have come to this meeting have never been to the UAE. And it, so it's a useful example. There seems to be a flourishing of the arts here. What is the state of the arts here? The state of the arts here, if I may say, it's, um, it's, it's still in the stages where we see it's growing. Art has been always, um, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say a, a part of, of an initiative that is, is, is respected by, by the founding fathers and how is it even with, with certain individuals who are from the private sector who are collectors. Let it be there, you know, stamps collectors. You see it in the Etihad Museum in Dubai. I went there and I saw uh, stamps that they were collected during the days when the country wasn't accepted yet. So you're looking at the first uh, postcard that left from uh, Dubai to, to India and was you know, used with a British stamp. But there is, there is, a, there is that uh, cultural kind of a, 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 an artistic kind of an interest that was there with, with our ancestors and founding fathers and what they have. And we see it by our early museums. But let's look at, again, what is, you know, what is the transition between what we've been seeing and the new world? And in between, the community, and I would like to specify the youth, the power of engagement, technology would be there is so important. We were used to look at uh, the number of eyeballs that would watch a news channel or, an, or, or read the newspaper. Currently they say, no, what is the engagement level? How are the audience engaged with the art piece? Is it provoking, is it asking, are they asking themselves questions? Are they expressing their views with an art piece? So for us, we reached a stage of an engagement. And then looking at the youth, they are the majority here in our country, and in the region, and they will be also holding the helm in the future. How can we also make sure that there is the right platform from the Creative Lab community of getting members to be a part of the virtual and physical space, from also the art galleries that are here in the UAE, and from in the future when we have the Louvre. How can an artist in the region, or visiting the region, or wants to be a resident in the region to be part of that scene? For us, art uh, is, is, is one of the elements that will define the culture of the UAE and the region. For us, it's important to look at, if people wanted to look at, unfortunately, the ruins of Palmyra or the ruins of Syria, how can they get into a room, a VR room, and just uh, put on their, their glasses, and as if they were in Palmyra? How can we do that? How can we revive that? We can revive that by them, number one, understanding their history, and there is you know, thousands of years before that, Currently, and what can they do next? We want to inspire them, but how can we prepare that? By the right policies, facilitation, ecosystem, and also having people like you discussing um, the challenges and hopefully the solutions that we can talk about. Well, you know, I, th I think it's, it's a very, very powerful message. Irina's talking about the first time that the UN Security Council recognized the importance of these cultural issues. There are forces, negative forces in this region that are saying we must destroy culture in order to advance political objectives because we see the power of culture. And we have or, uh, countries like the UAE and some of the others that you've mentioned here that are, are, are investing in it not just because it's pretty, not just because it's entertaining, not just because it's uplifting, but because it's a force for good, for education, for stability, uh, for pushing back on negative forces. And you have a tiny country here, which I think at the founding of this country in 1971, I, and I, I may have this wrong, but I think there were six or seven people in the country with college diplomas. And now here you are coming up on the, 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 the uh, 50th anniversary of the founding of the country, and you have the third largest music festival in the world. You just opened an opera house. By the way, the opera house here opened and in three hours sold out all its tickets. And those of you from elsewhere may know that the Metropolitan Opera is currently selling at about two-thirds capacity for the year and is really struggling. So that's a big change. You have 2454, the Louvre, the Guggenheim. There's a real investment in this. There's a real sense that this is not decoration. This is at the heart of, of a country. 
are you, as you travel around the world, you're dealing with political leaders all the time. Do you see that there is a broadening recognition among the political leadership in the world that culture is serious business, it doesn't belong at the children's table, or are you seeing something different? Are you see, or is it mixed? What's, what do you see? It's a mix. Uh, I, I see a mix in, in the way people appreciate or understand or have been educated about the value of the arts. The, the part of this discussion that, that I am most interested in is art as, uh, art as a vehicle for dialogue, a, ve a vehicle for dialogue of storytelling that then leads to some kind of change. That's what I think is really exciting. And when you look at examples uh, going back to, in, the, in America, the Native American cultures now and when they were there before America was settled by Europeans, uh, they have no word for art. Art is part of everything. It's not a separate thing. It's part of, uh, of ritual and food and, and so on. Um, if you look at our civil rights movement in America, um, the great uh, Martin Luther King and John Lewis uh, used the arts, posters and music, uh, as a way to advance discussion and idea. And so that's really exciting. And you know, I learned a lot of what I believe about art as social change in Northern Ireland, from work in Northern Ireland during the Troubles, when the, uh, the arts were used as a way to bring people of differing ideas together. In, in Derry, which is also called London Derry, because there's so much uh, different opinion there, there was a place called the Music Center, and it was the only place where Catholics and Protestants would come together to talk through music. So I see these lessons being really important and being learned but serially, they're forgotten, and then they're learned again, and then they're forgotten and learned again. And so that's what I see, um, the need for a community that, like this to constantly reinforce those stories in our own separate companies and in the global community as well. Okay, well, you know, why are we here? You know, one of the reasons is that these are important issues. Another of the reasons is that we, uh, we don't think this community exists yet. The truly global community does not exist. And we thought, you know, a la, you know, the, the, the American movie Field of Dreams, you know, if you build it, they will come. If you invite people, they will arrive here and they will um, uh, uh, have the conversation, elevate the issue, create the messages, and ultimately drive the changes that each of these leaders here have seen. And so, you know, I, I, the, this is the perfect framing discussion because it establishes one point. This is important. This is not peripheral. Culture and the arts are the foundation of politics. They are a driver of economics. They are the glue of a society. And we need to take them seriously that way in a way that it is not happening everywhere right now. And I think the thing that we can do um, uh, is follow this discussion by seeking actions collectively. Um, and that's the purpose of this event. Now, um, here's what's going to happen now. In a minute, you're all going to show your enthusiastic appreciation for this panel for starting things off. Um, uh, um, but, uh, and then after they leave the stage, we're going to have an address by the Minister of Culture and uh, Knowledge Development here in the UAE. Um, so you know what your role is. This is how the theater works. You get your role, and then you fulfill your role, OK? So first thing doing, please show your appreciation for these people for their terrific job. Yeah, there you go. That's it. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. Very, very good.